Welcome to today's webinar. Plate and shell buckling utilizing Bluebuy software is the topic today. My name is Andreas Hörold. I am responsible for marketing and public relations in the Bluebuy software company. For instance, the Bluebuy website, press releases, customer projects, the German and English webinars, etc. I will be the presenter today. My colleague Sonja von Bloh and Thomas Günthe will support me. They will answer your questions. You can ask questions via the control panel on the right side of your screen. You can show or hide the control panel with that arrow here. And then you can enter the question here. Yeah, Thomas and Sonja will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar, because there are too many, you will get an email after the webinar. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email your question to info at global.com. I switch off the camera, the webcam. Okay, then you can see the full screen. To the content today, the first part of the webinar is an example about plate buckling design according to EN 1993-15 in plate buckling. And the second part with another example is shell buckling design utilizing the global MNA and LBA calculation according to EN 1993-16 with RFM. First part, plate buckling analysis of steel plates according to Eurocode 3, part 5. There are three methods implemented. The first is method of effective cross sections according to section 4 to 7. The second method is the reduced stress method according to section 10 and the analysis using finite element method according to Annex C. Today we look at an example using the reduced stress method which is implemented in plate buckling. And that's the example. A panel with the dimensions 500 by 175 centimeters, um, trapezoidal stiffener in the middle of the plate or panel. Uh, material is steel S355 and the thickness of the plate is 14 millimeters and there are uh, compression stresses and uh, shear forces. Uh, sigma is 23 kilonewton per square meters and tau 1 kilonewton per square meters. Uh, square centimeters, sorry. <laughs> okay, we go to RSTAB and create a new file. Example plate buckling. Okay. And after I have created the new model, I can open plate buckling as standalone program, yeah, plate buckling, or as add-on module, design, steer, plate buckling. In this webinar, I open this as add-on module. That would be the same procedure if I started from RFM. Because there is one button uh, for taking over stresses, and I would like to show you uh, that in the add-on module, and that's why I opened the add-on module plate buckling. That's the first dialog, Eurocode 3, part 5, and you can uh, 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 select 
one of the national annexes, I leave the standard annex of the European Union. Steel S355, that's correct, and the plate dimensions are 500 by 175 centimeters and the thickness of the plate is uh, 14 millimeters. That's all for this dialogue. Then we need to create the stiffener. It's possible to uh, create transverse stiffeners or longitudinal stiffeners. In our example we have got only one longitudinal stiffener. In the middle of the plate from the beginning to the end of the plate then here we can select the stiffener type, for example, flat plate. We need to enter the height and the thickness and the position and the arrangement. I select the trapezoidal stiffener with the following dimensions. Height is 300, then the is 150, the width is 200 and the thickness 6 millimeters. Position that's in the middle of the panel and the arrangement is on the right side. Okay, we can check that with that button here, graphics, where are the dimensions and the trapezoidal stiffener in the middle. Okay, that's all for this dialogue. Next dialogue are the loads. I use design loads and the normal stresses 23 and 23 kilonewton per square centimeters and one is tau. Okay, yeah, and that's the button I mentioned before. If you yeah, have uh, created a RSTAB or RFM model with loads, you can take over stresses from members, from RSTAB or RFM. Um, the pressure must be entered with positive values, but you can check if you did it right here with that button. You can see the loads also with the, the graphic button. You can see the dimensions, loads and the stiffener. Okay, the model is complete. We only need to modify the detail settings. We can leave almost all in the default setting, but I would like to calculate more buckling modes. Okay, and then we can calculate all. So now the program calculates 20 buckling modes and the first buckling no mode uh, yeah, there's an overloading, the design ratio is 105% but at, as you can see in the graphic it's a, a buckling mode for a single panel, not for the total panel. Let's take a look at the graphics. I select here not only the Sigma X or the Tau, but the simultaneous occurrence. Okay, so that's eigenmode number one, buckling shape of a single panel. Two is the same single panel. So all buckling modes for single panels, 
but the 17th eigen mode or buckling shape is um, yeah, a buckling shape for the total panel and yeah that's why we can use that for our design. So I leave the dialog. I select here design by eigenvalues and scroll down to the 17th uh, yeah, eigenvalue and you can see the design ratio is 76%. Uh, percent. Yeah, and that can be used uh, for the design of the total panel. But then we uh, need to design the single panel as well. So let's do that. I rename the case total panel. Okay. And I create a new case, single panel. Same settings, but uh, panel dimensions are not the same. 500 by 72.5, thickness is the same. Uh, next dialog, no stiffener, same stresses, we have got only compression, so I call it also design loads. Okay, now then we can calculate the single panel. Okay, design ratio also 90% and yeah, the whole panel is designed. If the stiffener is prone to buckling, a plate buckling analysis must be uh, performed also for the stiffener. Uh, the procedure is the same like for the single panel design that I showed here but I switch to the total panel. Now sometimes uh, it's quite difficult to see what's the uh, buckling mode for the total panel and as an alternative it's possible to design the total buckling panel by using the analytical calculation method for determining the critical plate buckling stress described in Annex A. The requirements are met. We have uh, longitudinal stiffener in the buckling panel's compression zone and that's why I copied the case Annex A. Okay. We can leave all as it is. We copied all stiffener design loads, but we need to modify the detail settings. I need only one uh, buckling mode, but I select here according to Annex A. Okay. And I calculate all. Okay, the design is fulfilled. We have got a design ratio of 93%. For the case A, we got a design ratio of 76%. Now, but in that case, the alternative design for the total panel would be also okay. Now, that's all to the plate buckling. I turn back to the PowerPoint and we come 
to the second part of today's webinar, the plate buckling analysis of steel shell structures according to Eurocode 3, part 6, where are also three methods uh, integrated. First, the stress-based plate buckling analysis. It's a single application, a simple uh, application for expert engineers. There are low requirements for computer technology. Yeah, often the calculation is done by hand formulas. And yeah, but economic results are difficult to achieve for load situations significantly differing from conventional buckling shapes. The second method is the plate buckling design by global numerical MNA. LBA analysis, where small background knowledge for shell stability required and where also higher requirements for the computer technology. The, yeah, it must, must, must be possible to do a materially nonlinear analysis and a linear elastic bifurcation analysis in the program. And yeah, Computer technology using FE analysis is consequently applied. And the third uh, method is plate buckling design by global numerical GMNE -A, uh, IA analysis, where excellent background knowledge necessary. Now you need to uh, apply the uh, correct imperfections and it's not too easy. Considerable requirements for computer technology and difficult application in real design situations. In today's webinar, we use the method in the middle. That's the example. It's from a report from Professor Schmidt. That's the system here, uh, you know, simple silo with uh, you know, wall thicknesses of 10 millimeters, 8 and 6 millimeters. The load is a uh, accidental loading. Uh, uh, QD is 8 kilonewton per square meters. It's the difference between the outer and inner loads. Now, we enter only the silo walls including boundary conditions uh, for shells according to table 5.1. Okay, let's take a look at the next slide. We start here with the analysis. At first, uh, Elastic critical buckling resistance ratio must be calculated RRCR. Yeah, we do that by an eigenvalue analysis in RFM. Then we see uh, equation 8.24. If it is not possible to do an MNA calculation, it's allowed to derive the plastic reference uh, resistance, uh, resistance from a linear shell analysis. That's the text from the code. Yeah, in simple words, you must apply um, this uh, equation three times on three different places where the maximum values of nx, n theta, and nx theta are. And the lowest value, yeah, that's the value you use for the design. Sounds quite complicated, but we do that this way, uh, don't do that this way anyway. We use the materially uh, nonlinear analysis in RFM. Yeah. And uh, be, before we go to the other equations, I start with RFM. I enter the silo. 
circle wire center and radius. Radius is five meters. Okay, and then I copy that circle one times in minus 3.5 meters. And here I added the expanded settings. I would like to create a new surface between the selected and the copied line. Okay, then the surface is created. I only need to adjust the settings here. Standard, standard. Steel is correct, S235, but the thickness must be 10 millimeters. Okay, copy the line again, edit the settings here, 8 millimeters. Again, the same procedure, 2.2 meters, and 0 0.8 meters. Okay, I, oh, I select this one and this one, standard, and 6 millimeters. Okay, in the display navigator, I can yeah, show the colors in graphics uh, according to surface thickness. And yeah, you can see six millimeters, eight millimeters, and 10 millimeters. That's okay. We only need to define the line supports. We start with the line support at the bottom, local line axis system. We support in all three directions. Okay, and on the top of the silo, we support in X direction y direction but not in z direction okay that's all the model is complete we only need to uh, apply the loads we've got only one load case i call it design loads without self rate that i get the same results or similar results as in the report of Professor Schmidt. Okay. In Z direction, that's the, that's the axis of the surface, uniform and 8 kN per square meters. Okay. Okay, so and a linear in set load, the value 8 is here and the value 0 is on the top. Okay, ah, that's the triangular load. So now, all is complete, the model, the loads, and we can do or run the eigenvalue analysis. We open the add-on module of stability. Now we can leave our settings as they are and calculate at the first four eigenvalues in that case. That's the default setting, but we need only the lowest eigenvalue. Here you can see the eigenvalues, and we need that value here. 
1.507. I turn back to the PowerPoint. Here you can see the value. Yeah, in, in this webinar I would like to show you the yeah, most difficult parts of the analysis, the determining of the RCR and the RRPL. That's the next step. Okay, that's the mode shape graphically. I save it and then I copy the model because we need to define another model. Out results. Call it plastic. Yeah, we need to to define another model because uh, that's another model because I changed the material settings. That's why we can't do that in the same model as it is the two calculations. Now I I deleted first the our stability data and change here the material settings. I select the isotropic plastic 2D, 3D. Yeah, you all know the stress strain diagram with the uh, elastic behavior and the plastic behavior of the steel. Okay. Um, the, for for this ad, um, material model, the half mat and L add-on module is required. That's important information. So what need what we do now? We change the calculation parameters here, at the top, on the top. For the load case, yeah, if you have got load combinations, etc., you must do the entries for the load combination. Must be a geometrically linear analysis, and I select here the incrementally increasing loading initial load factor. Now we need to start with one. If we don't know what's the expected uh, initial load factor, load factor increment 0 0.1 and refinement of the last load increment 10. Now that's are good values to get an exact value. You can also define a stopping condition, for example, 300 or 500 millimeters. Uh, that's the value when you expect the um, yeah, model collapses. We don't do that, but we select here, save the results of the load increments. I would like to show you the calculation diagram uh, afterwards. Yeah, the calculation would be yeah it would take yeah, several minutes. I skip the calculation time and turn to an already calculated model. In the table uh, at the bottom here by table four results, you can see here the critical load factor. 35.6 and that's the value that are, is necessary for our design. Here you can see the different uh, increments. Um, let's start with um, 35.3 and then I go to 35.4. You can see a, a quite small deformation also in the next step, uh, 30, 
5.5, also a small deformation. And in the next step, 35.6, you can see a quite large deformation in a very small step. And yeah, that's the point when the program stops the calculation. I would like to show you the calculation diagram and the calculation parameters here. This dialog. Here you can see the increments, increasing the load, and there are yeah, quite small deformations. And at that point here, the deformation is increasing by by very small steps, and that's the point when the program stops. You can also print that diagram in the printout report. Okay, that's our, our value, 35.6. We turn back to the PowerPoint slide. That's the value, and when you got both values, you can calculate the overall relative slenderness. I have written down the equations here from the code. Uh, lambda cross OV means overall, uh, the whole structure. 4.86 is the value. Then the circumferential elastic imperfection reduction factor according to table uh, D.5. It's only valid for circumferential buckling you know, to take over this value here. For other uh, buckling modes, that's uh, another equation, but it's in the in the code. I show you an, another example on our website. There is the alpha calculated uh, with an equation. Then the plastic range factor, beta 0 0.6, plastic limit relative slenderness, lambda cross p, it's smaller than 4.86. We've got pure elastic plate buckling. Uh, some hint, you can download these PowerPoint slides, also the models from our website after the webinar. Uh, at the end of the webinar, I would I show you how to do that or how to find that. Then, because it's pure elastic plate uh, buckling, we must calculate the buckling reduction factor, factor according to equation 8.15. She is 0 0.0318 and the last steps are the determining of the characteristic buckling resistance ratio are, are key and then the design buckling resistance ratio RRD. It's 1.03 and the design is fulfilled. Here's the link with to another example on our website. Uh, that example where is pressure or a load at the, the top of the silo and that's why there is meridian pressure buckling and the alpha is calculated by this formula. And that's the same workflow here that I showed in the PowerPoint slides. Okay, now I think that's not too difficult to apply these equations. The most difficult part is the determining of RRCR and RRPL, but that's what I showed you in this webinar. Okay, that's the end of the 
part two. That's the uh, bibliography. You record the parts and the report of Professor, Professor Schmidt. At the end, I would like to introduce you the free online services on our website. Please use that. For example, our GeoZone tool with the snow, wind and seismic zone maps. Yeah, you can quickly uh, find out what the correct values are for the, the special place. The cross-section properties, yeah, you can also uh, define uh, parameterized cross-sections and find also data of cross-sections from an extensive section library. Then the FAQ and knowledge base with a lot of valuable articles. The models to download, there are you know, about 1,000 models on our website That's, that you, you know, can use for exercises or for your projects, etc. Then the YouTube channel with the free webinars and the videos. Our webshop is with prizes. You can download the trial licenses you know, of, for example, RFM and RSTAP with all add-on modules, the uh, standalone programs, uh, plate buckling, for example, and shape fin, craneway, our wind simulation, etc. Now, if you haven't already registered for our newsletters, I'll just register on our website and then you get information about an upcoming webinars, videos, online trainings, or news about our software. I would like to show you how to find the, that's our homepage, the slides, etc news and events, webinars. In the next days you will get a link with uh, that leads to that page here. And then you will find the recording here on that place. Before the webinar I already uh, downloaded or uploaded the presentation slides here and the model files. Also here you can see already the silo. Okay, then we are at the end of the webinar. I switch off the, uh, on the webcam again. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to my two colleagues for answering the questions. When you close or leave the webinar, there's a small survey it uh, would be very nice when you fill out or answer the short questions. It's quite important for our quality management. Please note that the worst score is 1 and the best score is 5. Maybe we can see or hear each other in another webinar. I wish you a nice rest of the day and bye-bye.